Hello everyone. In the past, we have demonstrated in different videos how return current flows on different structures. For example, we've shown how return current flows on a sugar cable or cabinet. We have shown how return current flows using twisted pair against a short braided wire. So in today's session, we're going to do a demonstration to show how return current flows on PCB. So first, I would like to introduce a <clears throat> small demonstration board that I made, okay? And it's a very simple demonstration. In the first demonstration, as you can see, we will provide a signal by connecting the BNC connector to a signal generator, okay? And um, this really represents a two-layer PCB where um, the second layer is a uh, ground layer and the top layer is just one signal trace. So the signal trace will take whatever uh, the frequency uh, of the signals from one end to the load, which is uh, 48 ohms in this case. Okay. Um, yeah, so you can see the it's not really a continuous ground plane as most people would call it. This is simply because in order really to demonstrate the current fit waveform, we, we actually did a few experiments, right? So the challenge of this demonstration, perhaps that's why not many people on the internet trying to demonstrate. You can see lots of simulations, lots of animation demonstration, but barely you can see real life demonstration. It's because it's really difficult to measure the current flowing on a PCB surface. If you watch our previous videos, you will see that to, to measure the surface current, we often use a surface current probe such as this. But the problem with these kind of surface current probes is that because they are designed as RF current probes, so it really works from sort of, you know, in this case, a few megahertz uh, all the way up to hundreds of megahertz. Um, so to capture currents flowing close to DC level, this probe simply wouldn't work. Um, to measure close to DC level currents, we often use this whole effect based current probe. But then again, the challenge is, I mean, if you look at the diameter of this probe, it's pretty small, but still, if you want to measure using this probe, you have to end up making some holes like this, right? There are other thoughts we tried. For example, I can also just cut two very thin uh, trays here and then uh, winding as many turns as possible uh, wires and then just measure the voltage that induced by this little uh, inductor. But really, we, we tried it. It doesn't really give us the best results. So we ended up like this, okay? So that's the explanation. So it's important to stress this because now the ground plane is not really a continuous ground plane because of these disruptions, right? Some people would, would call it. But still, it will give you an idea of how current travel um, on the ground plane when you supply a signal of certain frequency, okay? So that's the explanation uh, for making this board. Now let's move to the actual demonstration. So as I explained, for low frequency content, we're going to use this current probe, which is connected to channel one, as you can see. And for high frequency, we'll probably switch to this uh, uh, surface current probe. Okay, so let's connect the uh, current, uh, connect the source to the source side, and we're going to supply some signals to the load. Let's start with a close to DC current. So on my signal generator, I'm going to select frequency as uh, 5 hertz, actually. Okay, so I'm going to select 5 hertz, 10 volts peak to peak voltage. Okay, we start from this ground trace, which is closer to the signal trace here, and see if we can pick up anything. Okay, so that's connected. And in order to see it, I need to do this, I guess. Yeah, okay. So this is the um, signal we pick up, as you can see, it's 5 hertz. And it's about 30 milliamps as the return current flowing on this bit of the ground. What about the current in this ground trace, right? You can see also we can pick up 5 hertz signal, 
slightly less, 24 milliamps. This is perhaps because the trace resistance in this case is slightly larger than this resistance here because of the width difference. Can we pick up any signals on this far corner side? Low frequency, 5 kilohertz. I wouldn't say it picked up very sufficiently, right? I think at this level of current that's flowing uh, on the far corner, um, this current probe is a little bit struggling to pick up useful signals because you can't really measure 5 hertz signal here. Okay, but at 5 hertz, you can see current is sort of distributed. You can pick up return current here, you can pick up return current here. At the corner, a little bit struggling, but I'm sure there will be a little bit of return current showing here. So that's at 5 hertz, 5 hertz. How about we increase the frequency by an order, by a few orders of magnitude? Let's say we increase the frequency from 5 hertz to 5 kilohertz. Okay, so now I'm going to supply 5 kilohertz noise. Okay. At the far side, a little bit far further away from the center conductor, 5 kilohertz. Yeah, I can pick up signals, 5 kilohertz. Peak to peak is about 15 milliamps. Okay, 15 milliamps. That's at 5 kilohertz. Can I pick up signals here? Yeah, I can. And peak to peak is about 20, 19 to 20 milliamps. Ah, 5 kilohertz, I can pick up return current from both from this ground and this ground. Okay, that's 5 kilohertz. How about we now increase to 500 kilohertz? 500 kilohertz. 500 kilohertz, this probe here barely picks up any current uh, flowing on this ground return. So that means you, from here, you probably won't be able to see anything useful either, okay? So 500 kilohertz, this probe cannot even pick up a useful signal anymore because the level of current now is reduced quite significantly. And for picking up useful signals, as we explained, now we're going to switch to this RF current probe, surface current probe, okay? Um, but because this RF current probe is actually working in a megahertz range, so we're going to go even further. Rather than supplying a signal at 500 kilohertz, pretty high frequency, let's go for 5 megahertz, okay? So 5, I'm going to use channel 2 rather than channel 1, so I'm going to disable channel 1 and using channel 2 to pick up um, the return current flowing on the uh, ground. Okay, so let's try if we can see any signals here. Okay, so now you can see I placed the current probe sort of further away from the center conductor. Let's see if it's uh, 5 megahertz picking up. Okay, so you can see, yeah, 5 megahertz on channel 2. Peak to peak is 1 millivolts uh, picked up, right, at this time. Okay. Now, if I start to slide this uh, surface current probe closer, closer, closer to the center conductor, what do you see? You see an increased uh, uh, amplitude, right? This is, as we explained in many other videos, is that when you have high frequency signals carried by this center conductor, you know, your, your return current on the ground now start to be sucked up into this center region. So your current is really peaking close to the center, close to the forward current trace. Here, you get a lot less current. This is beautifully demonstrated in this um, demonstration, okay? You can also see, right, another thing I want to, okay, so it also has to be symmetrical. So if I do from this angle, it's the same effect. Okay, so it's the same effect. And another thing is, the current must also flow in this direction. You can't really flow this direction, right? That does, just doesn't make any sense. Well, how, how can we see it? Now, if I rotate this um, surface current probe, you see now zero, right? That means almost zero current flowing in this direction. And then if I rotate, keep rotating, you see the current uh, again, increases, and also if you 
observed very closely, the phase shifted by 180 degrees, indicating the direction of the current also, you know, because we mentioned this current probe has a direction property. So yeah, that make, make all makes sense. Okay, so that's the first thing we can see using a surface current probe. Second thing I wanted to demonstrate that is, now you can see, I'm, I'm measuring the return current sort of here on the ground plane, right? If you look at the ground plane structure here, you get lots of area. I mean, these two holes reduce the uh, ground plane, effective ground plane areas. However, if you look at on the low side and also on the sore side, what do you see? This is a reduced ground area, isn't it? What does the current, the return current look like in this sort of reduced ground area then? So let's, uh, let's go there. So moving closer, 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 and you can see the current just increasing higher, higher, higher. And now you see the current is really, really large because lots of the return current, when it gets to this point here, right, that's where the load is connected to the ground. This area is a lot um, smaller compared to this area. Therefore, you pick up more concentrated currents going through here. That's can, that can be demonstrated in this case, right, you see here. Yeah, see that? There. And same is true on the signal sending end. You should be able to pick up very uh, similar phenomena here. Okay? Right. Okay, so that's really a very um, simple and crude demonstration to show you that, you know, the return current on the ground plane of a PCB, um, really it's, it's at DC level is more or less equally and evenly distributed across the whole ground. As the frequency inside increases, the return current amplitude will be like this, right? Where the highest return current will be here and lowest return current will be somewhere here. So that's the first um, demonstration. Now, for the second demonstration, you will see that um, because in this case, really, this represents a very simple uh, signal routing, right, from one corner to the other. What we're going to do for the next demonstration is we're going to route a trace, right, signal forward trace, you can call it, from this point, going to this direction, and then do a 90 degree bending connecting to the load. And we're going to look at the return current and how it flows. Okay, so what change have we made? As I mentioned, we now disconnect this um, signal trace, but rather roots the trace in this 90 degree bending fashion, okay? And um, so here soldered to the same load. Now, this is interesting because not only do we have a 90 degree bending as a corner um, here, but also this corner is going through a ground area where is no ground underneath it. So this is like what we call a gap uh, or discontinuity in the ground plane. So we're gonna have a look at what the return current is going to behave when you have a circuit like this. So as before, we're gonna start with very low frequency, five hertz, okay? So five hertz output, same output, and we're going to use channel one to um, monitor the uh, current. Okay, so first start with this trace, put in here, and let's do this. Okay, there we go. We can see a current which is 5 hertz, as you can see here, and uh, peak to peak about 30 milliamps, measuring from here. Okay, so this is 5 hertz signals, and I'm going to do the same on this. No surprise, again, 5 hertz measured, similar level, 24 milliamps, okay? So again, demonstrates the point that at low frequency, the return current on the ground plane is evenly distributed, you know, giving you know, the cruelty of this uh, demonstration uh, kit. It's actually quite okay to demonstrate this. And now let's increase the frequency to 5 megahertz, okay? So 5 megahertz. So now I'm supplying a 5 megahertz signal, so as before, we're going to use channel 2 to uh, demonstrate the return current because it's a high frequency now. Okay, so put in here. As we discussed before, right, so if I start from here, I barely pick up any current, right, because it's still quite far away from the, uh, this, uh, the signal trace here. We'll put in here. Okay, we also need to 
Yeah, there we go. You can see we start to pick up 5 megahertz signals, pretty low level. As I move, for example, closer to the ground plane that underneath this uh, signal trace here, you start to picking up more return currents on the ground, right? As I move away, getting closer, you can still see the impact. And the same is true on this side of the uh, trace, okay? So close to the ground plane, um, underneath the trace, we pick up more return currents and just move a little bit further away, the amplitude reduced quite significantly. Now, the most interesting part is at this point, isn't it? As we mentioned, not only does the signal trace bend 90 degree, but also there's a uh, gap there. So what's the current going to look like if I place here? So first you can see there are a lot more current concentrated in this area. So if I really push it sort of as close as I can, right? this is where the current is flowing. You can see significant difference between here, for example, and here. I mean, close to here is also close to this corner area, but you, you can't really see, you know, if you, if you just look at the difference between here and here, this is mad, isn't it? This is so uh, much current going through here. So what's been going on here? Is it because of the corner or is it because of the gap? To rule out, we can have a simple copper plane or copper tape trying to demonstrate the difference between, okay? makes it's almost like a continuous ground without a gap, but you still have the 90 degree bend on the signal trace, right? So you see, I place the current probe on the same location. You still pick up relatively higher currents because here you have this bending there, but compare with the gap, this is still a lot less, okay? Now just to demonstrate that, so again, same is here, okay? Same on this trace here. Now just simply see, the difference if I now make this disappear. Look at that. That is the gap effect, and that is simply the bending effect. Okay, so yeah, uh, well, I mean, there are many things we can do, and also I would like to also investigate this a little bit further for future videos. What we can do right, for this demonstration board, uh, we can actually now connect this trace back and see how current distributes and things, things like that, right? Hopefully you enjoy this episode, and we'll see you next time.